Hello friends, welcome to Text Study Cell. In one of our previous projects, we have made an automatic pump controller circuit using Arduino. Now after using that circuit since last month, I have done some major changes to make the circuit more stable, used ESP32 instead of the Arduino and also added some new features to this new pump controller circuit. In this video, I will share what are the major changes I have done to make the circuit stable why I have used ESP32 instead of the Arduino and what are the new features I have added to this new pump controller circuit. So this video will be really helpful if you are planning to make any project with ESP32 as I have shared my experience on how I have designed this circuit using ESP32. For this project, I am going to use this PCB which I have ordered from JLC PCB. You can order any type of PCB from JLC PCB at very affordable price. More on this at the end of the video. This was the circuit diagram for the previous project using Arduino. Now here you can see I have directly connected the float switch with the Arduino digital pin. But in this setup, if the distance between Arduino and the float switch is too high, then Arduino may not get the correct data from the float switch. But in the new automatic pump controller circuit using ESP32, I have added some NPN transistor and register so that ESP32 can always get the correct data from the float switch. So here you can see I have used these GPIO pins of the ESP32 and these pins are connected with the float switch. Now here you can see the connection for the float switch. Here we will connect the float switch for the overhead tank and here we have to connect the float switch for the underground tank. Now let me explain this connection. So here you can see this is the common pin of the float switch where we have supplied the 5 volt. Now if the tank is full then these two pin will be connected internally in the float switch. So we are applying the 5 volt supply to this terminal and it is connected with the base of this NPN transistor. So as we are supplying positive voltage at the base of the NPN transistor, so this transistor will turn on so current can flow collector to a meter. So if this transistor is on, this LED will also turn on and this GPIO pin of the ESP32 will become low as it is connected with the ground. And at this terminal, we are not supplying any positive voltage and here you can see the transistor is also connected with the ground through a 10k pull down register. So here we are applying the negative voltage at the base of this NPN transistor. So this transistor will remain turned off during that period. And as this GPIO pin is not connected with the ground, so by default this will be high as I have used input pull up function while programming the ESP32. Now if the water level come down below a certain level, then in the float switch, these two pin will be connected together, the common and the L terminal. So in this case, we are not supplying any positive voltage at this H terminal. So the transistor will turn off as it will connect with the ground through this pull down register. So this pin will become high as the transistor is off and during this period as you are applying the high voltage at this L terminal, this transistor will turn on as you are providing positive voltage at the base of the transistor. And also if the transistor is on, current can flow collector to emitter. So this GPIO pin of the ESP32 will become low as it is connected with the ground. So in this setup, if the distance between ESP32 and the float switch is very high, still ESP32 will get always the correct data from the float switch. And here you can see I have used active low relay module. So if you make this GPIO pin low, then current can flow through this path, then optocoupler will turn on, also this LED will turn on, which will make this transistor turn on. And if this transistor is on, current can flow through this relay coil, so the relay will turn on. And here you can see in this circuit, you can also connect any external device like LoRa Bluetooth device with ESP32 which will communicate with ESP32 through serial communication and you can also connect multiple I2C device, OLED display and if you want you can control the pump with a IR remote. So there are a lot of new features to this project. If you want I will make separate video on these new features. 
so the circuit is very simple you can download it from the video description with the component list but to make the circuit more compact i have designed a pcb for this project you can download the gava file from the video description and order it from the glc pcb with glc pcb you can order any type of pcb at very affordable price for this project i am going to use their pcb assembly service so i will click here then upload the gava file select the quantity and color then turn on this radio button and select the side now upload the bom file and pick and place file then you have to select the components which you want to be soldered by glc pcb now click on save to cart and place the order now we will receive the pcb as per the delivery option you have selected in my case i have received the pcbs within a week and you can see the quality is very premium in this affordable price so you can use glc pcb to get high quality pcb at very affordable price you can find the link in the description here you can see i have connected the leds and the push button with the pcb now here i have made a small correction while designing the PCB, I have used GPIO 12 to get the reading from the float switch. But while flashing the ESP32, you cannot make the GPIO 12 pulled high. So instead of the GPIO 12, now I have used GPIO 15. I have already corrected the GAVA file. So if you order this PCB, you do not have to do any correction in this PCB. Now as I said, you can also connect the OLED display an IR sensor with a PCB to control the pump from IR remote and here you can also connect the external LoRa or Bluetooth device for serial communication and different I2C device. We'll discuss those features in upcoming videos. Please let me know if you are interested. Now we are going to connect the ESP32 on this PCB. Now I will connect it with my laptop these are the source code for this project now if you want to control the pump from anywhere in the world then you can download this code here i have used blink iot platform but if you do not want any wi-fi connection then you can go for this code you can download both this code from our website iotcircuithub.com just visit the article you can find the link in the description then you can download the code and all other required information from these buttons. Now let me open both this code. Now if you are not using Blink IoT platform, then you just have to install this AC button library. And here I have installed this version of the ESP32 board 2.0.7. I have shared all the related link. But if you want to use Blink IoT platform to control the ESP32 from anywhere in the world, then you have to install these two libraries now as we are using blink iot so first we have to configure the blink cloud account for this project so let me go to my blink account now if i go to template here you can see i have already created this template for this project now let me go to data stream so here you can see i have added total four data stream if i go to fast data stream you can see i have selected the pin v1 and data type is string so in this manner i have created the first three data stream you can see all the data type is string and i have used v1 v2 and v3 pin now in the last data stream i have selected the pin v4 and data type integer and here i have selected zero as minimum value and one as maximum value thus you have to create four data streams now to add device click here then go to new device select prompt template select the template then click on create then you will get all these details under the device info so i will just click here to copy all these details then here i will paste it then here you have to enter the wi-fi name and wi-fi password now if you refer the same circuit after doing these changes you can directly upload this code to esp32 after programming the ESP32, you can see this Wi-Fi LED is on which indicates now the ESP32 is connected with the Wi-Fi. Now we can configure the Blink IoT app. So let me open the app. This is the device we have added. Now I have already configured the mobile dashboard. Now it is showing float sensor error as I have not connected any float switch with this PCB. Now if I go to setting. So here you can see I have added three value display widget. 
now if i tap on the first value display widget you can see you just have to select the data stream for each value display widget and for the button widget first you have to select the mode here i have selected switch mode then you have to select the data stream and after doing all this your mobile dashboard will be ready now please refer to the circuit diagram to connect the float switch and the buzzer with this pcb here you can see i have connected all the components as per the circuit now let me turn on the supply instead of the pump i have connected this ac lamp for demonstration by default the circuit is in auto mode so this mode led turns on and after connecting with the blink server this blue led will turn on now both the green led is on which indicates both the tank is full right now now if the water level drop down below a certain level in the overhead tank you can see this red led turn on and also the pump automatically turns on and this blue led is the indicator for the pump now during this period when the pump is on if the water level drop down below a certain level in the underground tank the pump will automatically stop as there is no water in the underground tank and if the water is available in the underground tank the pump automatically turns on and when the overhead tank becomes full the pump will turn off now again if the water level drop down below a certain level in the overhead tank you can see the pump turns on and you can also monitor the tank water level status and the pump status in the blink iot app now we will go to manual mode i just have to turn on this mode switch to go to manual mode you can see this mode led turns off and also the pump turn off after changing the mode to manual now in manual mode i can control the pump from this switch let me turn it on you can see the pump turns on we can monitor the real time status in the blink iot app now let me turn it off now i will do the same thing from the blink let me turn on the pump now let me turn it off and as i said you can also monitor the float switch position in the blink app so currently it is showing up tank empty if i change the position of the float switch you can see it is showing up tank is full so you can monitor everything from the blink iot app now to go to auto mode i just have to turn off this mode switch and it will go to auto mode and you will notice a push button here so if there is any loose connection for the float switch the float switch were disconnected somehow from the pcb then the buzzer will start after every two seconds after checking all the connection correcting all the connection you have to manually reset the error flag with this push button after that the pump will start automatically until that the pump will not start as the error flag will be active so this is another protection i will highly recommend you to go through the article for this project you can find a link in the description and here you can see i have used a 30 ampere relay so you can easily connect up to 1.5 hp pump now if there is no wi-fi still the circuit will work so this is a very useful project if you find it helpful then please hit the like button and share it with your friends now as i said you can connect multiple sensors with this pcb so i will show those features in upcoming video for that don't forget to subscribe to get the notification for the upcoming videos thank you for watching have a great day